Hey everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Hey, let's take a walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hello everybody, welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Thanks a bunch for stopping by guys. We're going to wrap up the Linderman's beers that I have. Uh, this is a Guza Cuvée René or René, René. Uh, this is a 5.5 percenter and again, I don't know what year or vintage it is. I've had it forever guys, 8 to 10 years probably. Uh, it has been cellared in the refrigerator the entire time that I have had possession of this beer. So, uh, I don't think any uh, further fermentation has happened. Uh, these beers uh, are brewed in Belgium, uh, and these, uh, these guys have been brewing beers forever. Uh, it says on the label since 1811, I think. It says Grand Cru, uh, 1811, yeah, so. I've been doing it for a couple of couple of years there, huh? So, uh, and this is basically the same kind of bottle that the rest of them have been in with the bowl and probably got the cork inside under the cap. Uh, so this is going to wrap up. Hopefully we can get the cork out without having to push it into the bottle or it falling into the bottom of the bottle like the one we did the other day did. Uh, so uh, let's jump over to untapped. Uh, we don't have any IBUs listed. And it says here, it is one of the jewels of our brewery with its golden color, sparkles, beauty, uh, beautiful sherry aroma. This is the queen of Guzas. Uh, this old is a blend of old and young lambic matured in large oak barrels called Founders. Um, then bottled in a beautiful champagne bottle where a second fermentation takes place after six months. The Guza obtains a golden color and slightly carbonated and tart, but kept in a cellar for a few years it becomes truly exceptional, and it has been a few years. Uh, the use of champagne bottles dates back to an uncertain time period when Lambic Brewers spe specialized in recovering empty bottles from great restaurants and other establishments where a lot of champagne was consumed. That is why we chose the most noble of bottles to hold our noblest beer. Eh. Pretty much the same looking bottle to me that the lamb mix were in. So uh, that is all we need to talk about, I think. So this one is a little bit bigger ABV than what the lamb mix were. So let's uh, get the full off of it and get it opened up and see what we have here, guys. Now let's see if we can get the cork out of this thing. Without pushing it through. These things are so, so hard to get into. And it's going down. So maybe I can twist it out here. I haven't got it in very far. having any success. So. There we go. I think I've got it down far enough to twist this thing out. There we go. It is out. Sure, I have to get these things opened up. But is what it is into the glass we go and there is some sediment in the bottom and before I even get it in the glass I got a big chunk of something right here in the top of the bottle I didn't see it come out 
but I don't see it there anymore, so it probably fell into the bottle. There it is, it's floating in the top of the glass. I don't know if it's a piece of cork or exactly what it is. We'll see if we can fish it out. Yeah, most of the sediment stayed in the in the bottle. It is pieces of the cork. So, I think I got it all. Good looking color, uh, a nice amber color. Get it to the nose, see what we have. A little bit of funkiness going on there. I don't know if they use bread or what kind of yeast or if it's spontaneous. I can't tell if it's a cross between some pears or apples. Very pleasant smelling. But there's a little bit of funkiness going on there from the, like I said, I'm not sure if they use any kind of bretomyces or, or if it's, you know, spontaneous open wild yeast. Uh, well, let's dive in and see what we got. Cheers. That has a really pleasant apple pear smell and taste. So, uh, and somebody's ringing the damn phone in there. I'm sure somebody's going to sell me life insurance or something stupid. Very pleasant. Very pleasant. Very tasty. So, uh, this one seems to have a little bit more tartness to it. Very easy drinking. I'm not getting any of the alcohol. Uh, very pleasant. A very tasty beer. Uh, not something that I would probably pick up again, uh, being uh, not having an ABV or a date on it and, and uh, being a 5.5 percenter. It's not in my go-to range nowadays. So uh, let me sip on this and we'll come back and we'll give it a grade. All right guys, I'm back. I've been sipping on it probably about an hour. Uh, very dry, champagne-esque like. Uh, slight tart, sour to it. Uh, not much. It's not a super sour or tart. And uh, it's not based on a fruit, uh, but uh, uh, when it was cold, I was giving a little bit of apple parish, and, and now it's just more like a dry cider to me. So, uh, decent beer. Uh, is what it is. Uh, not something that I would probably purchase again. Final shot. Alcohol is basically non-existent. Uh, it seems to have settled very well. Seems to be very pleasant, guys. Uh, enjoyable. So, that being said, uh, guys, uh, I'm going to give it a 90, uh, A minus. Over to Bear Advocate, they say 92, outstanding. And over to Untap, they have the 3.77, which is in their B plus range. So, I'm in between right there, between a 92, I'm giving it a 90, and they're giving it a, a B plus. So, uh, if it had, uh, as all of theirs, if it had a, a date that I could decipher or see, or, or an ABV on the label to know what you're purchasing, what it is, it, it, it might go a little bit better with me as far as your rating it, but uh, not knowing that, uh, I just picked all these up at probably the same time and uh, stuffed them in the fridge when I got home, uh, not knowing what I was buying at the time, but just collecting beers that I'd not had before. So, uh, with that being said, uh, if you've had this uh, from Linderman's, uh, 
the Guza, uh, Kube, Rene. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. Till we meet again, let's go see what's in the fridge.